Yes, can we, does anyone have any questions? Oh, we got two. Yeah. Do, you, do you work on like all 10 at once? Great question. Um, I, so in theory, yes. So I will draw them all out. I won't start quilts until everything's drawn out. And then I will start working on each quilt. I have to do it individually, just for like the, the limitations of my machine. So then I'll make them one at a time, fully quilted, and then they're all hanging up and I finish them with the crayons. So in theory, I think I'm working on them at the same time. But you don't work at three at a time? No, 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 no. But the whole concept of 10, you have a place. It's done, like, it's done, and that's again, it allows me not to think about it. It's just like, you're doing this one, then you're doing this one, then you're doing this one, then you're doing this one. And the crayons you just draw and you don't iron them in? Funny you said no, yeah, so my mom like taught me the right way of doing it and classic me, I was like, I'm just gonna do it a different way. And so it was funny, um, I was doing it, and she was explaining the actual reason why you iron that uh, heat, right. and I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. But my mom, the way my mom works is like, she works with quilts that may be washed or may like engage with the world differently. And I was like, you're not even allowed to touch these things. Like, why am I worried about ironing? Like, this, I'm just gonna color on it and move on. So it, was, it became like a, a, a quickness. It came like a fast thing. Because I was like standing there with iron, I'm like, I'm like, what am I, what yeah. am I doing? Like, I just, sorry, that, yeah, that was short lived. So, so, you, so your mom's a quilt, you too, you go off with a quilt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my next question. How long have you been a quilt? Uh, since 2018. But it comes into your genes, so it's yeah, absolutely. Does it. Ooh, uh, ooh. That's a, uh, my favorite part is when you have an idea that you're excited about. Because cause somebody was explaining that <clears throat> when, like, you're never, the idea of what you want to make in anything is never going to be as good in the real world as in your head. So that moment of, like, wow, like, you, no matter what you do, there's gonna, it's going to, like, let you down. You know, and that's why I like that's why you keep making art. Because if I was satisfied with like if I was like, I did it, I don't have to make art anymore. Um, like I'd be like, all right, I'm move on. But you're constantly chasing this like thing, but it's never gonna be as good as when it's in your head. So that's like the, the my favorite part. Because then you then you walk the journey and you know like I've done the process where you're like that's the most exciting. But again, you can't do the process unless you start it. So the beginning of it is mine. Can you dunk a basketball? No. <laughs> no. No. You used to. Yeah. Well, it was funny because like I that was one of those things that like silly like I thought like meant so much and it's just two points, you know. And, like, <laughs> but I was like, I have to be able to dunk. And uh, well, I did once in a game. That was really cool. But it was two points. So yeah, we did it. So it was like like it was documented. How do you choose your crayon colors? Oh, that's a question. Usually um, random, but uh, usually what I go for is a contrasting tone. Like that's that's usually the uh, the pick uh, in all honesty. But usually it's random. Can you describe the sketching process a little bit? Sure, sure, sure. So um, there there's two ways I sketch. Like if I'm sketching like in reality or like from life, I'll do it like pen and paper, just for whatever reason, again, a silly rule. But then when I sketch from a photograph or like from a reference, I'll do it digitally. And again, this is a new process. Um, when I would start sketching, there would be a moment where like, I'm like, I don't want it to be like, rep like too representational. And I was like, stop. Like literally I'd close it up and just like do something else and return to it. And then when I return to it, it's like, not in the same space physically or mentally. And then it's just like, that's where I find it very interesting to see where it takes me, you know, like where I'm going and how I choose to fill that space. There's a lot of research about taking breaks and mm. how that enables the creative process. Sick. Uh, do you I love taking breaks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> because even the way you describe sketching, it yeah. sounds like you take breaks and put yourself in a different environment. Totally. And that 
yeah. enables like a different kind of yeah. creative process to unfold from the first so, time that you so. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, no, I mean that makes uh, no sense, but I love it. I'm gonna use it. So, yeah, <laughs> I know I've heard scientists <laughs> proven that you have to take breaks, you know, it's just like I should have just took a like thirty minute break during this interview. Like, <laughs> you know, and, and we just like sat in silence. You know, right? <laughs> Quilting, there's, there's sometimes there's significance with specific pieces of fabric yep. in a quilt, and mm -hmm. I, I heard a podcast interview with you where some it was mentioned that people will send you fabric yeah. to include in a quilt. Yeah. And I'm just wondering, is there any piece of fabric in this show that you can point to and say this had to do with this? Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> no. Yeah, and I used to get sent a lot of fabric, and I started realizing the fabric I was getting was like really like I was like, God, what am I? Gonna like somebody even said like leather. I was like, I don't have the right machine to work with this. So I was like, I'm not taking any more fabric uh, because it didn't make any sense. And so, uh, but I love go. Like I had this uh, specific quilt store, I mean, a fabric store that I go to here because in New York, believe it or not, it's really tricky to find like quilting fabric. And um, this is a great place in here, up here that um, has like just it's like a warehouse full of fabric. And it, I love just going there. And again, like mindlessly picking out fabric. Like I don't go in there being like, I need a red, I need a blue, I need. I'm like, all right, what am I interested in today? And I'm like, this is cool, this is cool, this is. And then I'll go back to my studio, and I literally have all the fabric already in my studio. And I'm like, now I have two of everything. I'm like, like I should probably have a list, but yeah. What's the place? Oh, fabric basement. It's um, in Dayton. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome, and it's awesome because the way they do it is like. They're really big, and so they basically go to a fabric company and buy. They were like, "We will buy X amount of stuff, but we're selling it at like six dollars a yard." There's like all their stuff is like the same price. It doesn't matter if it's like quote unquote better fabric, or and um, and that's I mean it's classic artist and it's like it, it's cheap and it works. Wonder what looks like you're finishing off your clothes more, like your mama taught you. You're not leaving raw edges. These look. No one's a closer look to any. Well, no. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're all they're all wrong. All wrong? Yeah, no, yeah. Still no yeah. finishing. No finishing. And the the, the 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 reason that came about too was one, it was one of those things where like I did it once and I'm like, why am I doing this? Like this like this is one takes a long time and like it does nothing for me like physically, sexually, emotionally. It just does nothing for me. But the thing I started <clears> noticing <throat> is that it felt like you were closing off the image when you would do it because then all of a sudden you would have like a black line or like you would box it in in a weird way and so that one was good right behind the show and that one was good where you see where the edge is really really wonky and so in theory it's not really square mm -hmm. and that is what I like and you've seen a lot of my other work where like a tree branch would just go completely off and like it just breaks that line and that to me I enjoy much more, um, but yeah, but but it is cool, fun because especially in a white wall gallery, the white, the batting, which is the, the border, kind of fades out. You kind of lose it, which is to your point, right? Can you talk a little bit about your mom and her masterful, yeah. traditional, yeah, quilting? Yeah, totally. Yeah. So the way I got into it was um, my mom got a machine, and I got fascinated by it, and was playing around with it. But it was very interesting because the way my mom makes quilts is literally like by the book. Like she'll have a pattern and she will make it to perfection. Obviously she takes her creative liberties in um, color and quilting patterns and stuff, but it's like, it's perfect. It's like almost like, it's not even like Amish perfect. It's like perfect, perfect. <laughs> and, um, it's, but, and like to me, I, it feels so restrictive, but to her, it's like so liberating because if she, and I, we've had a long conversation about it, I'm like, why don't you just do whatever? She's like, well, again, she doesn't know where to start with doing whatever. You know, it's like, I can't start with, like, she needs these mechanisms to start. But then when she starts, she's rolling and she's enjoying it and stuff like that. And so that was the biggest hack for this whole thing because instead of trying to go to a class, Google, like, go to YouTube University to figure out how to quilt, I just had somebody I can literally ask any bizarre, because there's these bizarro things that will happen, like your tension's all weird, or like this will happen, and I'm like, what in the world? 
for us. And I just literally had a person that I could ask, and they knew the exact answer, which was a godson. And to your uh, other question about when I started, I repaired and installed the clothes machine that I worked on, which again is a crazy advantage because um, the worst thing that happens in art or just in anything is if one, you don't have the right tool, and then two, you don't know how to use the right tool. You know, and so I got a huge uh, advantage because I learned how to like maintain, fix, repair these machines that are quite big. So I've been fortunate enough to like anything. It was funny because then it switched in a way because my mom knew all like the technical aspects of quilting, but she didn't know the technical aspects of the actual machine. And so she would ask me for things and I would like help her that way. Um, so that was awesome. And um, But then it's funny because then it's like anything, when you figure out your machine, you kind of don't have to do a lot, you just keep it like running, and that's where it's been really nice that like, the machine just goes and I just keep on punching holes. Who's with the skeleton over here? I don't know, man. Like, I, <laughs> so, uh, I was looking at, um, again, I, I put, I put the, the rectangle there, and I was like, oh, that's cool, like just leave it like a rectangle, whatever, just fill it in with color. But then I was looking at um, some painter's work, I forgot what, um, who would work. And she's like, yeah, that was a really cool skeleton. I was like, let me just add a skeleton into it, so. Is there any significance to the title, Kachari? Oh boy. Uh, so, <laughs> I really struggle, as you can imagine, with like the logistical aspect of like being an artist. You know, you gotta like, you gotta, you gotta do paperwork and stuff. Like, <laughs> stuff on the wall. And so, what I started to realize was, um, that uh, that aspect of it is like for everybody else, not really for the artists. You know, it's like you. It, I could go through the rest of my life and never titling another work, and I would be super content. You know, but like for historians and documentations and curators, and, you know, like, galleries, galleries, yeah. like, <laughs> probably untitled would not work for all uh, all of it. You have to like put it in the It's funny. So what I realized, I was like, this is. This is maddening, and I remember I would get like so worked up about like what the title would be. Like I originally I would do like a very straightforward title, like if it was a tree, I'd be like tree, you know. Or I would do some like off the wall trying to make a deep meaning out of it, and it was, like whatever. And so I I was really struggling with this, and I was like, this is just driving me up the wall. And so again, setting up rules and parameters to fix this problem, I figured out what I do is that now whenever I need to title anything from all the way up to the show itself. I do one or two things. I either ask whoever I'm, who I'm with to like, oh, what's the title of the show be? And, or I'll just like have a book on hand. I'll just like open the book and just find titles and be like, this is the title, this is the title. So it, it's all, it doesn't make any sense, which is awesome. Like, I love the confusing aspect of it. But then I started to learn that people make sense of it in their own way. And it's like, that's what's hilarious because people will like say stuff like, oh, that, I understand so deep. Just, I was like, Right, I know that. <laughs> so, so that's how I title myself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Jen. Thank you for all for being here. All right.